How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian. And it is Fun Friday here on the show. That's right, we're live today. And it will be a fun Friday, one way or the other. We got some news to talk about, but hey, it's Friday. There's not a lot going on. We can talk about Rampage and Collision and SmackDown and the NXT Halloween Havoc show if we'd like to. And uh, then some news. And then, yes, it will be your chance to give us a call here today. Don't call yet. Don't put anyone to work yet. I'll throw that number out here in a little while. But you can text us at any time. The text message line is 425-780-7566. That is only for text messages. If you try to call that line, you're just wasting your time. 425-780-7566. You can email me at f4wonline at gmail.com. I'm also f4wonline on threads occasionally, Instagram occasionally, and you can always get a cameo. What better weekend to get a cameo? from myself to you or a loved one or hated enemy so head up to cameo i am brian alvarez on cameo i know that's hard to believe and also i'm on x at brian alvarez so among the news notes we'll talk about here today we got the first match for the tokyo dome and what a match it is health update on maria canella saturday night's main event we've got Mountain for Glory coming up tonight with some NXT talent on the undercard, dynamite ratings, and more. So a lot to get into here today. Mike Sempervivi is going to join us, as always. And so will you later on, because it is Fun Friday. And no Fun Friday can end without a good time. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. It's Fun Friday here on the show. Woo! Yeah, send us in your text messages. I'll read them here on the air. 425-780-7566. That's for text messages. Once again, 425-780-7566. Or email me, f4wonline at gmail.com. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com also works. And then we'll take some phone calls later on. Not a ton of news happening here today. Do want to wish the best to Maria Canellis recovering after ungo- undergoing surgery for a mass on her adrenal gland. Surgery done on Thursday morning. Next step, a biopsy to determine what the mass is. Micah Bennett stated she is surgery went well. She's staying over at the hospital for observation. Should be released tomorrow. I want to thank everybody who's reached out. We love you all very much. So she had asked for the adrenal glands to be tested or checked six months before due to some symptoms she was having. The uh, mass was, quote, accidentally found during a test, but it was inconclusive. So hopefully everything works out great for Maria. But that is the latest on that situation. Now we wait and find out what it is. So all the best. Tonight we've got a bunch of shows. we got Rampage and SmackDown tonight. We have got... Man, a lot of stuff. Let me look at this thing. A lot this weekend. Not tons tonight, but setting up a big weekend. Well, I will say this, and that is that things have improved dramatically of late in terms of AEW announcing stuff in advance, but can't say that for Collision. Holy smokes. We just got a Collision card. It's like the day before the show, and the show is at about 1,200 tickets. So, like, the last time that we gave you an update, it was at 900 this is the show in Cedar Rapids. So, uh, I don't know, man. 1200 is not good. We need to, like, build some stuff up, get some stuff going. But for Collision, which is coming up on Saturday, we have got Ricochet versus Leo Rush, Penelope Ford versus Jamie Hayter, and FTR versus Roosh and Drillistico. So I'm presuming... Something will happen involving the Outrunners in that match. But, you know, when the Outrunners got beaten, everybody's like, don't worry about it. They're going to get their revenge. They'll get their win back. Let me know when this happens. Because I don't know if you guys watch AEW, but that doesn't happen very often. They don't often do that 50-50 get the win back thing. 
They do it more now than they did the, the year one, where we never, literally never saw rematches. But DIY, I'm sorry, uh, FTR and LFI were having a match on Saturday. Now, speaking of DIY, we've got a number one contenders match on SmackDown tonight. They will be facing the Motor City Machine Guns, and the winners will be getting a shot at the tag team titles. So, I don't know, man. I don't know what's happening here. What do you mean? Well, the Motor City Machine Guns literally just debuted, okay? Mm -hmm. And I like that they have already moved on in the tournament, but now the winners of this tournament will be facing the Bloodline. (laughs) And I guess it's possible that, like, Shelly and Saban could win and then beat the Bloodline. I mean, maybe Jey Uso could cost them the match or something as revenge for what happened with the Intercontinental title. But my gut kind of tells me they're not losing those titles. So it's just, you know, Shelly and Saban debuting, getting two wins, and then losing a tag title match. And they don't even fit into that storyline anyway. And the only other option is if, like, DIY win, but then you're beating the Machine Guns on their second night in. So I guess the only thing I can think of that makes sense to me is Shelly and Saban win the tournament, they face the bloodline, and Jey Uso or whoever uh, helps them get the win as revenge for the Intercontinental title switch on Monday, and that further builds up the War Games match, presumably coming up at Survivor Series. When do we believe that the tag title match is going to take place between the Bloodline and the winner of this match? Just a number one contenders match. Because they are taping SmackDown also tonight for next week because they're going to be going to Saudi Arabia and everything. But you could, it's not the best thing in the world, but you could very easily have a non-finish in that Motor City Machine Guns Bloodline match if they were to win tonight. By having Jey Uso get involved and Sami Zayn and this person and that person, you could absolutely do that. It's not ideal, but you could. And what you could also do is, because they lost the titles to the Bloodline, is have DIY win. But in that case, to get the Motor City Machine Guns out of that, you either have the Bloodline do something that backfires you know you have tamatanga run out there and do something where they screw over the motor city machine guns but why would they run in during the match what does the bloodline have to do with either of these teams that's the problem because they're the tag team champions so they want to ruin whatever is going to take place between these two teams because they don't want either one of them Mm. and and look and in that case you could end up making it a three-way again not ideal but then you what you could also do is get the titles off the bloodline without ever beating the bloodline So you could do that as well, too. But, you know, it's too bad they don't have more tag teams already built up with something to, especially heel tag teams, because there's a very easy thing you could do, which would be the Motor City Machine Guns lose because somebody runs in and causes them the match, which would be their first big feud in WWE. But unfortunately... I mean, what's who's the biggest tag team? You know, what's the biggest heel tag team on, you know, other than the Bloodline on SmackDown? So, I, you know, unfortunately, they don't have that option. We got Andrea, Andrade and Carmelo in the final of their best of seven, which was just announced as best of seven, even though we knew it was best of seven. But they never told us it was best of seven. Yeah. For reasons I can't understand. But anyway, they've had like six great matches. But now L.A. Knight is a special guest referee, so surely some shenanigans, which probably will bring the match down, but we'll see. And then Cody and Gunther have their face-to-face. And then Rampage tonight, we got Ricochet and Nick Wayne. Is that a spoiler? I don't know why we didn't announce that on Wednesday, but that's who it is because the show's taped. We got Undisputed Kingdom versus Gates of Agony versus Shane Taylor Promotions in a three-way. Because we got The Beast Mortos versus Beef. I'll take it. And we got Anna Jay versus Layla Gray. So Anna Jay can get a win before her ta- or, uh, her title shot. How dare they defeat Layla Gray like that? She should be the one going over. Oh, stop. Oh, come on, mister. I can't wait to watch Beef. It's great with me. No, Give me a I break. know why you want Layla Gray to win, because you think that she's attractive. That's but that true. makes absolutely zero sense in the storyline, because Anna I... Jay's got a title shot. Anna she never Jay. does anything. She wears a flight attendant outfit. So you're I haven't say- seen her wrestle in nine months. So you're telling me Anna Jay is not attractive? That's your problem with this? No, you but I'm saying that's Anna why Jay's you are ranting and raving about Layla that. winning. 
I didn't. Why say that would at Layla all. win this match? That doesn't make any sense. Because she needs to build her back self back up after being attacked by Marina Shafir Stop. and being the only woman who's had to suffer at the hands of the mid card attacking Blackpool Combat Club. Would you stop? Come on. And then we've got Halloween Havoc on Sunday. So Halloween Havoc and Raw are in the same building, Sunday and Monday. And then the Crown Jewel and Raw will be, I believe, in the same building in Saudi Arabia. So a lot of back-to-back shows in the same building. This one has Trick Williams and Ethan Page, Devil's Playground match, Tony D and Oba Femi in a Tables, Ladders, and Scares match, Roxanne and Cora versus Julian Stephanie Vacair, Andre Chase Ridge Holland ambulance match, and Kalani Jordan will defend against a member of Fatal Influence <laughs> in an unknown match. Great. Sure. At least we got the rest of the card. Can they spin a wheel to decide who's going to be the uh, opponent as well as the stipulation? Well, here's the, the thing match? with this this whole uh, fatal influence thing. It's like it many, be Jasmine next. <laughs> many times now it's been, you know, these two will face two members. Or this person will face a member. And, like, they don't tell you. And then, like, the show starts and it's just two people. It's like... I don't even understand why it has to be. A, it's not like the surprise is meaningful or there's a reason for it or, you know, people are tuning in to find out who. It's just, it'll be two of them. It'll be one of them. And then it just is. What's the point? Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back right in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. New issue of The Observer. Dave has a report on two potential matches being planned for the return of Saturday night's main event, which is December 14th, the Nassau Coliseum. Where it all started. Long Island. Mm-hmm. You won't go there either, will you? Undisputed champion Cody Rhodes versus Kevin Owens and Gunther versus Damian Priest. So these are currently hmm. slated but not etched in stone. So obviously, those are big matches, dude. Yeah. And I think it's... Obviously, quite important to do this because, as we have learned from both Battle of the Belts and the last time they did Saturday night's main event, there's no quicker way to get people to stop watching the show than for nothing of any value whatsoever to be on the shows. And uh, I don't know, man. Like, neither title should change hands. That's a tough one with Priest in New York, though. But part of me thinks that we should. Uh, Maybe do a title change of something else. Tag titles or something. So. Well, how many matches is it going to be? I don't Are they know. getting a two-hour block for this? I, I, I don't I don't know how long they're getting. Well, the we'll old Saturday night's main event, I mean, from the minutes. modern era, was, was like an hour. In recall. that case, you don't need any more matches. I mean, you really only need to do two, have some good interviews, have some vignettes, have some all that gaga that... You know, they love to produce and put on there and make shiny. Do that if it's only going to be an hour. If it's going to be two hours and you have between 8 and 10 or 9 and 11, then, yeah, you could do a little bit more and maybe have a different title switch in there. But I kind of like the idea. I've always been a fan of 90 minutes. And they were lucky to get that because of that's what Saturday Night Live was. But you go back to Memphis and the Channel 5 shows and – an hour, not enough. Two hours, sometimes too much. 90 minutes is something that I wish somebody would bring back. And then we've got uh, first match official for New Japan's biggest show of the year, Tokyo Dome, January 4th. Tanahashi versus Evil. <sighs> Shall I get my flight now, or maybe I'll wait? Mm. Torture. A house of it. It's like John Cena starting his one-year retirement deal, and they announce his first big match of the Royal Rumble will be with Miz. Well. I don't know. You know what's really important, though, about that uh, deal with Evil is it keeps him out of every other type of picture in New Japan, including any title picture. So he can he can brawl with Tanahashi over who can be Presidente, and frankly, for Tanahashi, who could use... All of the help he can get physically in his matches, that's a place where some of that House of Torture nonsense could actually be a benefit. Oh, man. Sports fan 1414 here on the chat actually has a great idea. What's that? Well, Saturday night's main event is where Tiffany cashes in. 
I like that idea a lot. Not a bad one. I like that idea a lot. Who does she cash in on? Who cares? The point is we get a cash in successfully. Probably Nia, of course. Well, but, but uh, you know, a big a big angle on a Saturday night's main event so people know we're only doing four a year, but do not miss Saturday night's main event because you would, never know what will happen. It would be a lot bigger deal if she cashed in on Liv Morgan because that would mean you have Rhea Ripley possibly out there. You got... Uh, almost said, almost said Dominic Guerrero. Dominic Mysterio would be out there. I think you would actually get more out of doing something like that, and it would be a big shock that, again, anything could happen on Saturday night's main event. Man, there's so many people advocating for to cash in on Liv, and I just don't get it. It's like they've been building up her cashing in on Nia for months and months and months and months. Like, people want that. Why would you ever cash in on Liv? Just because you can, but like... But if Tiffany ends up on Raw come Netflix time or before WrestleMania, I mean, that could absolutely happen. That could absolutely Well, happen. I know people are saying that thing as well, but to me, here's the thing. We, we almost never do house shows anymore. It's like they don't even exist. So it's not like if you're on SmackDown and you're dating someone on Raw, it's like you only see them two or three days a week. Oh, you're bringing that? Okay, yes. Yeah, it's like there's only... Okay, they don't. They're not together well, one day. Like they'll survive. That. Explain that to people because they well, may not know. I didn't mean that aspect of it, but well, that's what everyone's know. talking about. Like a Tiffany and uh, and and what's his face? Ludwig. That helps, right? Yeah, Ludwig. Tiffany and Ludwig are dating, but they're on opposite shows. Ludwig. But unless like he's on the road from, you know, Friday through Monday, and she's on the road from Monday through Thursday. And they only see each other for a day or something. And yeah, that's an issue. Get them on the same brand so they can go everywhere together. But there's, <laughs> they're missing one day. I guess two days. Anyway. I don't know. We could possibly see other people moving up that may have a relationship with somebody on Raw. I wouldn't know about that, though. It's over my head. NXT will have a presence at Bound for Glory. They've announced on the countdown. It is Zaya Brookside and Brinley Reese versus Ash by Elegance and Heather by Elegance. Sure. That is Ooh. on the uh, that is on Heather the by Elegance? Who's Heather by Elegance? I don't know. Heather somebody. I miss this. Where's apparently. Vinny? I need Vinny here to explain what's going on. But uh, the rest of the show, Nick Nemeth and Joe Hendry, Frankie Kazarian, a special guest referee. I'm pretty sure we should all believe in Joe Hendry, but I don't know for sure. We got Jordan Grace, Masha Slamovich for the Knockouts title. Like that. Full Metal Mayhem with ABC, the Hardys, and the System. I think these Hardys are winning one more set of tag team titles tonight. Oh, I feel bad for whoever is going to take that senton from Jeff. PCO and Matt Cardona for the TNA digital media title and international title in a Monsters Ball match. Plunder. Mike Bailey against Vikingo for the X Division title. Knockouts yeah. champion Spitfire against Wendy Chu and Rosemary. Come on. <laughs> Did Danny Luna save? Please don't do it. Call your shot gauntlet match where AJ Francis enters last. Top dollar. Frankie Kazarian enters first. Moose and Santana, Josh Alexander and Steve Macklin and Bob Ryder and Rhino inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame. That's bound for glory. On Saturday. Check it out. On Triller, right? I'm sure it's many different places you can and get it. And a pay-per-view, I guess, yeah. Or and TNA Plus, I guess it would be. That's their... Still got that going on. And then we've got Dynamite on Wednesday, which did 637,000 viewers. And a .19 in 18 to 49, which is... It's all right. Head-to-head with NBA basketball on ESPN, NHL on TNT, and CNN Town Hall with Kamala Harris. Their overall viewership down 18% year-over-year, 18 to 49, down 20% year-over-year. Did hold up better this week than in previous weeks, so that's at least good. And, uh, yeah, let's let's keep up this uh, promotion and announcing matches. That's what I say. I wonder how NXT is doing in the uh, same building as Raw. Let's find out. Halloween oh, Havoc. Yeah, Halloween Havoc on uh, Sunday is at uh, 5145. Now, so it's Where pretty, are they at? They're in the uh, Giant Center in Hershey, Hershey. Pennsylvania. 
So 51.45 for Sunday, and then Raw on Monday is at 72.18. So really not that much higher than NXT. Uh, They did draw 9,000 last time. They're set up for 8,100. They'll probably do that. But, uh, yeah, two nights back-to-back, not bad. I would argue after the failure of the second CW show to be in the bigger building in St. Louis and then moving it, that if you're going to do this, sure, yes, it is a pay-per-view or premium live event, and it should be able to kind of sell off of that. But when you're in buildings like this, I'm surprised that they don't offer a two-for-one, some sort of discount, some sort of bundle tie-in with NXT and with Raw or NXT and SmackDown, whatever the combination would be. You know, again, doesn't mean everybody's going to go. Doesn't mean that everybody's going to want to have, you know, two tickets or anything like that. But it would probably help matters a little bit. All right. uh, Text us. 425-780-7566 is the text message line. And after the break, hey, you may as well start calling now. We'll put Daniel to work. 1-800-878-PLAY. That's one 800 878 Seven five two nine. If you would like to give us a call, one eight hundred eight seven eight play. One eight hundred eight seven eight seven five two nine. Don't curse and yeah, don't, don't don't be an please. idiot. Please, okay, yes. don't be an idiot. Try not to embarrass yourself or other wrestling fans. I haven't seen Lenny in the chat all day. He's, He's busy sad. getting his podcast ready, so he may not have time to call in here today. Oh man, yes. But Is he call doing in the Patreon thing too. And give us your name, everybody, and uh, we shall. I don't know if he has a Patreon or not. <laughs> I don't think it's been. I don't think we're that that deep into it yet. Ah, not like the uh, Mid Atlantic podcast, patreoncom slash. Brandon here says nothing against her, but when was the last time that Jasmine was one of the surprise competitors? And yes, I know that's not how you spell her name, but I can't remember how. It's. G A I'm sorry no. J A Z M Y N N Y X Yeah, something like yes, that. Yes. Yes. Jasmine <laughs> Nix. Well, it's because she's the greenest of the three by miles. Yeah. I mean, JC and Fallon both I mean, they did indies before coming to to WWE. Can we just let Fallon wrestle all of the matches? That would be a lot better. Well, I, I would say that Fallon is by far the best of the three, but Jasmine's yeah. fine. And or I'm not sorry, not Jasmine, uh JC. JC's fine. Be- yeah, she's a lot better than she originally started as way back all right let's start these calls and these uh messages after the break observer live back in the show brian alvarez here wrestling observer live mike sempervivi also of wrestlingobserver.com a couple text messages and we got some people on the line if you want to text us 425-780-7566 if you want to call 1-800-878-PLAY 1-800-878-7529 Gambit here on the chat asks, will there be any payoff to the box storyline? Tony starts a storyline and doesn't know how to progress it. I'm asking because the Bucks attacking Tony went nowhere. Yeah, that one that one wasn't very good. But let me tell you something. I don't know if you know anything about John Moxley. I don't know if you've ever read his book. I don't know if you've ever heard an interview with John Moxley. There is zero chance that he is involved in a storyline that is going to go nowhere. It will go somewhere. That is 100% guaranteed. Could I'm be talking a cliff. 100% guaranteed. <laughs> Could be to the finish there, line. With there is great a success. point to this, and, and it will progress. Okay? <laughs> I can't say anything about it. Whatever else, anybody else. He is not. He is not going to. Uh, just be involved in it and nothing happens. So, he's a champion, too, by the way. So if he ain't driving that car, he's at least a uh, shotgun with the uh, directions in hand, then is you, that's, what you're, uh, that's what you're saying here. Yeti Pod Pie says, I thought the payoff was Blood and Guts. No, they had a match at Blood and Guts, but what was the payoff? It was like, the story was... <laughs> Jack Perry was too tough to give up. The story was that Tony was gone, and so the Young Bucks became the number one people in control of the company. Well, then, like, three weeks later, Tony Khan came back, and, like, they each still had power, and, like, they could overrule each other, but sometimes not. It's never been explained, like, who has power and who doesn't? Why can Chris Daniels say this or the Young Bucks? Like, if Blood and Guts had been a match where the winner of Blood and Guts 
they will have power over AEW, whether it's Tony's group or whether it's... And no, Chris Daniels is... I mean, it's just... there's no There was no payoff to it. It's like it still is just kind of... Eh, sometimes the Bucks can make a ruling. Sometimes Tony overrules it. Sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes him or Dan... I mean, no, there's not been a payoff to this. We still don't know what happened here. Tony Khan was once fearful for his life. He went out and told the crowd... You know, granted, a little bit of a different situation, but he got his neck put into a, a brace by the Young Bucks, and now all of this is happening. There is carnage. There are innocent people being beaten up all over that building. Not one word from Tony Khan. Not one word from Christopher Daniels. You know, these are the things that people will say, oh, you're nitpicking or you're just being a hater, and it's like, no, there's ways to kind of, like, meld everything in where the thing makes sense, and you can have all of these orbits going on but like everything's got to actually be connected with some sort of tissue somehow all right michael and rochester you're on the air what's up hey what's up brian mike thank you for taking my call uh i just want to talk about wednesday night's uh, AEW show and one of the problems i have with the company now i think we've all would agree that it's not nearly the company that it used to be is that it reminds me a lot of wwe pre-pandemic when they would have all the McMahons were in the ring and Barry Corbin was the GM and they talked about how we're going to do stuff for the fans because the fans are not happy. And then it was just constant heat, heat, heat afterwards. And I noticed yesterday that every champion AEW right now is a heel. And that's even including Ring of Honor. Everybody is a heel. And I watched the show Wednesday night and there's maybe 2,000 fans in the building. And it just hit me like... The show is depressing. It's not fun to watch. And part of the reason why is because there's nobody to really root for. Like when you watch WWE now with Triple H in charge, there's people to root for. Whether it's Cody Rhodes or Seth Rollins or Jay Uso or Roman Reigns is now a baby face or Rhea Ripley. In AEW, all the baby faces, they just get humiliated. They get treated like trash. Well, hold on a second. I want to to thank you very much for the call, but here's the deal. So, listen, you you can't have all good, happy news all the time. You got to have you got to have some heat here and there. And if you look at what they're doing with AEW, clearly the idea is that we are about to have a whole bunch of baby faces show up, and you will have people to cheer for. Will Ospreay is coming back. Clearly, Kenny Omega is coming back. And obviously, they've got this big plan, which will likely start with Darby Allen. I'm sorry, start with uh, Orange Cassidy, and eventually build to Darby Allen. And some one of these baby faces at some point is going to unseat John Moxley. And in order to get to that position, I mean, you got to build some heat. You can't just have happy endings all the time and everything's good. I mean, there was a reason it was so depressing at the end of that last pay-per-view. And a lot of people were down on it, but you know what? Sometimes you have to have a very, very sad ending. People keep mentioning The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, it was a, it was a sad ending to the second Star Wars, but there was a point to that. It's like you can't just always have a happy ending. So yeah, but we'll I, see I, where it goes, but like you can see they're building up to the big return of a bunch of top baby faces. He is right, though, in a way where it comes to who do you root for there? And what do they give you to root for there sometimes? You know, why are you rooting for Daniel Garcia? Because AEW gave him everything and he put MJF away and he's back. Okay, but like, he is right about the fact that there's a lot of heat and there's a lot of unlikability when it comes to some of their characters or at least... Not enough reason for me to want to stand up and get behind them and be whipped into a frenzy the way you would want people to back Cody Rhodes or Ric Flair or Roman Reigns or Bruno or any of those people. They don't have one of those guys on the babyface side right now. Well, let's go to Lenny. Lenny, you're on the air. What's going on? Yes, Lenny. Hopefully you have less dead air on your podcast. What's going on? He put you on hold. Hey, I, I mean, <laughs> channel's open. It sounds like I hear a phone ring. If you'd like to. <laughs> it ran, ran out of minutes. 
He got stood up by Lenny. Are you guys aware that Lenny is going to do a podcast? Will you be there for that first show? Honest to God, that is, you know what? If all, I got to be honest, if more pro wrestling commentary based podcasts sounded exactly like that, I might listen to some of them. I hope that wasn't his one call. Let's see what else we got here. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lenny's Podcast. And we'll talk to you next week. All right. Let's see what You've we got You've inspired here. many people over the years to do podcasts. I'm a, very, you know I'm right? a very inspirational man. You get a lot I of agree. blame. That's... <laughs> Spurs says, I agree with a good amount of what our last caller was saying regarding baby faces. I don't think Kenny Omega has ever been missed more. Well, what can you do? The guy was hurt. Well, He's lucky he can come back at all. So hopefully he does come back sooner rather than later. Hey, let's see how Samoa Joe comes back because one would figure. Yeah, Joe's got to come back. Even if they want him to be a heel, people are going to be going crazy for him, especially depending on how you insert him into one of these stories. So, uh, you know, again, Things are looking better with the fact that so many people are coming back and they are doing some of the little things that we complain about on this show. You know, as far as local promotion, apparently Kyle Fletcher was a not as good as Gabe Kidd, apparently doing an interview, but he was on TV in Iowa doing the, the morning weather and all that sort of stuff. So that's good to hear because that's very important, you know. So they they at least have some sunniness on the horizon, whether they're able to take advantage of that, we'll see. And yeah, this person here notes, not every Ring of Honor champion is a heel. Dustin and Sammy are tag champs. Dustin and the Von Erics are six-man champs. They're not on Dynamite or Collision. What like, we literally have not seen them since, like, they won the tag team titles. And they just kind of vanished off into the sunset. So Are the, are the Von Erics signed? I guess. I do not matter. I know there if you have a championship, you don't have to be signed, but I was wondering what happened to them. Per says with the Continental Classic coming up, who do you have as a favorite to win the whole thing? I want to see Takeshita as a double champ. I think the question is like, are we going to have champions in the Continental Classic and will they have to put up their belts? Because if you remember, like when they did it last year, Eddie Kingston was in the tournament and like his belts were on the line in all the matches, right? Or was, well, yeah, it, but, or was it just at the end, whoever won got all the belts? No, no. I think his deal, I thought there, yeah, he put him on the line, and that's why he had to get to the final to win. But again, But if he lost, he didn't lose his title? No, he was going to lose him. So if, if Eddie Kingston lost to Takeshita in the tournament, he Takeshita would have won his belt. I'd have to go back. And Eddie went undefeated? Remember. Can't remember. Does anybody know? Hey, and what is it going to be for? Does it set up, is that going to be, if they do the Continental Classic, will it be all about setting something up for January 5th in that pay-per-view that takes place in Tokyo, or is it going to be something that they're going to have that will be for other domestic pay-per-views? You know what I mean? And that crown, is it going to be, again, is the tournament going to be about January 5th, or is it going to be about the everyday of AEW stories. You know, usually when I ask these questions, like the answer is immediate on the chat, but like we still don't have an answer yet. So I think people might be looking it up, which by the way, is a very important thing because I've been saying this for a long time. And that is, okay. So Eddie chose to put his belts on the line in every match. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I believe the company made it for the triple crown. I believe he says. So Eddie went undefeated in the tournament. Here's the point. I've said this a thousand times. What do they need a championship for this? Why? His belt was on the line. Now, Sandman says his belt was on the line in the tournament and not in every match. Nobody remembers, okay? And this is a very important thing I've talked about a thousand times. You know who does remember? And they probably remember every single match that Eddie had and who he be everything. It's Tony Khan. Ever. He's got a photographic memory of everything that ever happened in AEW. And the problem is, sometimes when you're like that, you presume everybody else does as well. 
You know who else I think does is is Will Washington, who helps write with Tony. He remembers everything. So now you have two guys that remember everything. And so I think one of the issues is, well, they presume everybody else remembers absolutely everything, but we don't. We just don't. And, I mean, you can look through the chat here. Like, people are trying to figure out and remember. And, you know, we don't remember off the top of our heads. We can look it up. But the point is, you can't book. Tony cannot book for, Tony and Will cannot book for Tony and Will. You got to book for the rest of us, which is, okay, remind me what happened last year. Remind me what happened with so-and-so. Remind me what happened with Jay White and Hangman. Like, remind us. Because we don't remember everything. Don't do so much. You can do so much much. as long as you remind us. It's not like you watch Raw and SmackDown and they don't do a ton of stuff. But, like, they'll remind you. If there's an important part of the story, they'll show you. They'll remind you. Okay? And don't tell me, do not tell me that this is me saying that AEW needs to be like WWE. Because you know what? New Japan will remind you. WWE, TNA, NXT, I'm sure CMLL. I go back and I watch all these retro shows from all sorts of different promotions. They will all remind you. They will show you a replay. They will tell you what happened. It's not a WWE thing. It's that's what you do in pro wrestling because normal people don't remember everything. And get the big cat Ernie Ladd to tell it to you. Oh, man. Back in a moment, Observer Live. And the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. This person says, well, New Japan will do a video package. But unless they are doing a show outside of Japan, the video package will not be in a language I can understand, and they don't allow the commentator to voice over what we are watching and don't subtitle it. Okay, that happens sometimes, but you know what? If you listen to the English feed of New Japan, you get Chris Charlton, okay? Now, Chris Charlton is like Tony Khan and Will Washington. He remembers everything that ever happened. Not just in this universe, but like... You know, the mini universes theory of quantum physics, like all of the other universes of New Japan, he remembers all that as well. Okay. Third generation New Japan. He and remembers. he'll sit here and explain everything to you. Like the professor. Everything. Like if you're guy. watching New Japan for the first time, you can watch a New Japan show with Chris Charlton on commentary. And by the end, you're like an expert in New Japan. And does anyone go, oh, Chris Charlton wants New Japan to be like WWE? explaining everything to the fans. No, no one's ever said that because that would be stupid. That's the job of the promotion to explain everything to you, whether it's a video package or whether it's a guy on commentary. Excalibur, like, when Excalibur realizes something needs to be explained, like, he will do it, but he's got so much other things that he's got to talk about that he doesn't always get to it. Like, the other day, he went on, like, a two-minute explanation of what happened with Hangman and Jay White, and I was like... Thank you. Like, it was a secret on Collision. And then on Wednesday, for the first two minutes of the match, he just went through everything that happened. I was like, thank you. We need more of that. We need more of that. When the show is over, go back and edit out CMLL. Because I believe CMLL and AAA just ignore things and then move on. Well, that's that not that's not it. good if but they don't do, do that. that. Yes. Don't do that. And if I tell them to do it, it doesn't mean I want CMLL to be like Raw. I just want them to tell me what the hell's going on. All right, we're out of time. I want to thank all of you that tried to get through. Apparently, Brandon tried to get through and couldn't. So maybe maybe somebody was sabotaging the phones today. Closing the port's mouth? I can't believe it. I still had fun. Anyway, we're out of time. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.